Hey guys, I'm Abiru and welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're looking at the Tier 6 American aircraft carrier, the Saipan. Now the Saipan is a huge upgrade on its predecessor, the um, Independence at Tier 5. Um, in pretty much every way, with the exception of concealment, which isn't a major uh, statistic for aircraft carriers, because usually they're uh, miles away from the battlefield, um, miles away from everyone else, hiding as best they can, um, they use range as their advantage. So with the side plan, there's a few interesting changes. There's, um, well, the first thing is, one of the upgrades of the ship is an extra plane squadron. So you can have up to four plane squadrons at any one time. Um, before I run through the modules of the ship, I'll just quickly do the uh, the general statistics of the side plan. So the side ability is 52. So it's a gradual increase on the uh, independence tier. Um, tier 5, 41,000 health, and up to 152mm armour on the Citadel, which you can see is very small, and the rest is around 6mm to 25 or 65 for the armoured case, uh, or the, sorry, 65 for the armoured deck. So 41,000 health, it can take quite a lot of hits, probably at this tier, around 4 or 5 of the big destroyer torpedoes from the Japanese or American destroyers. But this thing is also very fast, so it can very easily maneuver around torpedoes um, with its quick turning time and top speed. So the aircraft of the ship, a huge upgrade on the previous tier. You can have, uh, on this particular ship, uh, I mentioned you can have up to four uh, different plane groups at any one time. And this one, uh, with the best upgrade, it's one fighter squadron, it's uh, two torpedo bomber squadrons, and one dive bomber squadron. Now, I, I'm, I like doing the cross tactic, but recently I've been using the, um, the alt key to mainly fire my torpedoes on the enemy. Because you can usually go a bit closer, and you can let them all go at one go. Uh, and you can do two lines of however many there are. So that's let's say there's six uh, planes, so 12 in a straight line, heading directly uh, where a, uh, a battleship or a cruiser is going. And it rips them to shreds, it, it causes flooding, it causes massive damage because these torpedoes also do a huge amount of damage. Artillery, so this is this is a, an interesting thing because there's an upgrade uh, in, the, in the modules of the ship which takes away anti-air capability and adds artillery. Now the artillery you can't control, uh, same with any uh, aircraft carrier, but you can, uh, it is secondary armament so it does fire onto ships that are near you it's like a, a, a last line of defense against destroyers, which will very quickly creep up on you. And you can, of course, use hold down the control uh, button and click on the ship you want to fire. With, as long as it's within sort of yeah, fire ranges, four kilometers, you'll be able to um, attack it. And these do a fair bit of damage, 127 millimeter. So there are four of them, two at the front and two at the back. And they are helpful um, as a last resort. But also, these guns here, uh, they, they did replace them with the module upgrade. You do replace uh, pretty standard aircraft, uh, anti-aircraft guns for the secondary armament. But also, the secondary armament, which can fire at ships, can also fire at planes. So, four times one, so it's exactly the same gun. It has a high, uh, high firing arc, and it can indeed fire at planes. And the score of the anti air capability is 36, which is pretty good. If you have any bombers or die bombers heading towards your carrier to in order to uh, set it on fire to blow it up or whatever, it can uh, with you know withstand a lot. You know you probably need two or three groups in order to do any damage to this because it, it has a lot of firepower on the sides, as you can see next to the deck, um, the airfield deck where the uh, planes take off. There are loads and loads of anti air guns which fire upwards and do a lot of damage to planes. So 36 is a pretty good score. Um, not as good as the uh, the tier, the, the Cleveland, and the other um, sort of cruisers, and mm, the Fuso. Fuso has 40. Well, there has been um, a very gradual increase in the anti-air capability. Um, there was a recent patch today, in fact, um, which has adjusted some things, so I will overview that in the next, um, probably tomorrow at some point. So yeah, back to the Saipan. Maneuverability, so 34 knots is max speed, which is great. This thing is huge. It has a, a very high survivability, so 40,000 health and it goes 34 knots, which is the speed of the average cruiser. 
destroyers go around 40 and um, battleships go around sort of mid 20s to 30. So this can, um, if it's a sort of hit and run tactics, I always just uh, get this thing to go to the other side of the map, well away from all combat, um, get the planes going, and then if it's a bit you know quieter, I kite the enemies around the map. Never ever get this in close proximity to anything because it will burn and it will die very quickly. So the turning circle is 875 meters. That's all right. Uh, the, is it the um, Tier 4 Kuma and lots of others? All have, they all have around 800 meters. So things with high maneuverability around sort of mid um, 50s to sort of uh, 70s, they always have a turning circle radius of around 800 meters, which isn't that bad. But this thing is big, so 800 isn't that bad. Rudder shift time is 15 seconds. Um, again, it's not bad. It's probably more of a battleship sort of turning time than a uh, cruiser. But you can always choose the perk that re uh, decreases the turning time by 20%. Now, the concealment is a little bit worse than the uh, independence. It's 12.2 kilometers surface detectability range. And that's sort of the max distance of most cruisers. Um, Destroyers is more around sort of seven. So destroyers come in close proximity to you, you're going to be spotted almost immediately, and cruisers, they'll be able to see you. And the only thing you can do really is use your speed to your advantage. Use the 34 km, uh, knots as uh, best you can. So air detectability is 12.7 kilometers. This thing is big, so air targets will be able to see it. Um, but then again, air targets aren't so, so much of a threat because of your um, vast anti-air capability. And also you have planes which you can then set off to then engage other fighters, torpedo bombers, dive bombers, etc. So yeah, the main statistics of the Saipan, the Tier 6 American Aircraft Carrier. So the modules of the ship. I did mention there are uh, there was a gradual increase um, on the independence. In, in, in some respects, a, a big increase. So the, the base uh, ship uh, is, is all right. I'll, I'll just take all the upgrades off and I'll show you guys what it's like. Uh, so this is the basic um, ship, down to its uh, very basic core. This is as you would have it, um, vanilla ship. So you would have this, uh, you buy it, you get this. So MK5 Mod 1 is only one fighter, one torpedo bomber, and one bomber, dive bomber. And that's the same as the best of the independence class. So that's not that great, you know, um, especially with the, the initial planes at your disposal. They're kind of a bit underpowered. They can't really stand up to uh, anything really above tier 6. Um, Everything seems to get a lot better from here on in. The technology for planes seems to increase dramatically. So, basic hull is 39,000 health, same armor, and up to 40 uh, hangar capacity. And the planes are pretty much the same as the previous tier, the best ones of tier 5, the independents. Um, yeah, there's not a huge difference here. I think there's a slight increase on the uh, speed of uh, the fighter and the dive bomber. So, the first upgrade, which I recommend you choose, is the hull upgrade, which gives you an increased health of 1,400 to 41,300. Hangar capacity plus 8, so that's 8 more planes at your disposal. That's probably as a, as a group and a half. Um, well, a group's around 6, so... Um, and secondary guns increase. This is the increase where it takes away the anti-air capability um, and increases the um, artillery. And the artillery is oh, a secondary armament, of course, you can't control, but it's it's good uh, as a last resort. So I'll choose that first. It's a pretty nice upgrade all over. And maneuverability increase also. So the second upgrade I'll probably choose. Um, I'll probably choose the plane ones first. We have the fighter. Um, you should already have the MK5 Mod 1, uh, Mod 2, sorry. Uh, the MK5 Mod 2 uh, is two fighters and one bomber. You get that at tier 5. Um, so. This shouldn't cost you any experience. You should be able to upgrade this immediately. And I, I would also go for the um, the fighter uh, increase in, in capability. So it has an increased speed of 31 knots and an increased DPS damage per second of 24. So that's that's the big part of this. It, it can easily take on anything um, sort of tier six and below. If it's the tier below, if it's the uh, one of these new Brewsters FTA Buffalo versus the Grumman, then this one's going to win uh, by quite a margin. So the loadout is less, so you have less am ammunition, but the survivability is also increased. So it's also good at uh, intercepting other planes and torpedo bombers. Dive bombers, it's just a good 
it's a good fighter overall. Now the next thing is the torpedo bomber. I think this is the first torpedo bomber upgrade for the line so far, and it is quite a dramatic one. So it has an increased speed of plus 12 knots to a maximum of 106 knots, and an increased torpedo damage of 2,600 to a maximum damage of 8,500. So this is a huge um, increase. So you, uh, when you have a torpedo bomber squadron, you have six of them. So six of them plus the 2,600 damage, it, it can really add up. You can really take down the bigger ships with ease with this now. And, and of course, the increased survivability to a maximum, well, it can take damage of 1,160. It's a huge increase, especially with the last mod and uh, module change of the ship, which is the MK6 Module 3 which is uh, it decreases one fighter so you only have one fighter and you have two torpedo bombers uh, instead of the one and you have the same amount of dive bombers so th this is fantastic so you have two torpedo bombers with the increased damage one fighter with the increased dps and one dive bomber with no upgrades but it is it's quite good nonetheless it's, uh, it goes quite fast yeah, its main role is just to set things on fire in my opinion and there are no um, engine upgrades, but 34 knots is, is fine. So yeah, the torpedo bombers really makes a difference in the ship. The upgrade uh, is is very nice. So the credit bot upgrades, I would I haven't chosen any, but there are some pretty interesting ones. There's like plus 10% gun effectiveness for aircraft, um, firing range of anti-air guns. Uh, yeah, minus 10% time in service aircraft. I probably should choose that one. Um, and we have the defensive one, minus chance in fly, fire and minus chance in fire and flooding. Obviously, less crits on critical pieces like steering. And we have the modification, propulsion, uh, etc. Increased, uh, decreased shift time and increased uh, to full top, full power time. Well, decrease in full power time. So I am quite far away from the next tier, but. Uh, Probably the only one I would really choose. They do cost quite a lot of money. I know I'm running out uh, quite quickly with the amount of ships I am currently servicing. So I think the best one is, without a doubt, the flight control modification one with the decreased time for service aircraft. So of course they land, and then uh, that, that time when they sort of load up ammunition again is decreased by 10%. So that's great. I do have a similar thing with the commander as well. He has. Um, Minus 10% uh, sorry, minus 10% servicing time for torpedo bombers, which is also great. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get into a battle. Okay, here we are. This is the Tier 6 Saipan American aircraft carrier in action. Okay, this is a uh, domination map uh, on fault line. We, uh, we actually have two uh, independence aircraft carriers, which we are against. Probably not the best duo to go up against but we do have the uh, technological advantage here but there will be no more planes to fight um, there will be six against my four and they have slightly less tiers around though we do have higher tiers pretty much unanimously tier six in fact they are um, and the enemy has quite a lot of tier fours tier fives so this will be a very close match hopefully Start letting loose our planes, the torpedo bombers, the dive bombers, the fighters. And we'll probably engage towards where the battleships will likely be. Fuso is very slow, the Miyogi is a little bit faster, but still very slow. At least it's not the um, the Congo, which is a very sort of fast battleship. It's one of the fastest battleships available in the game at the moment. At the top speed of around 30 kilometers, uh, sorry, 30 knots. So most of our cruisers are going towards C, which is about normal. Battleships are sort of going towards A, sort of one or two line. And we have destroyers going towards the middle. So I could hopefully cut off maybe a couple of cruisers by going towards the gap here on A. I think I'll do that. I'll uh, cover the fleet with, uh, sorry, the fleet of planes <laughs> with my fighter squadron. Of course, I'm very. If the enemy does choose more fighters over, more fighters over uh, bombers, uh, torpedo bombers, dive bombers, then I, I'm in trouble. Um, 
can only hold off so many. Probably one or two squadrons at a time with the fighter. He's quite high in DPS, probably can take down, down them very quickly, but the loadout is less than the previous tier, so I will be in the air less time um, than the independence fighters. The Oba has very, very strong anti-air capability. Along with everything, in fact, there has been a quite a, a substantial buff with most of the cruisers and the um, battleships in the recent patch. I will review the patch in uh, probably tomorrow, so don't worry. Uh, it's It's got a few changes, a couple of new ships, not really for the Americans, but there's a Soviet ship, which is a premium ship. I will look at that at some point. Let's attack the Fuso, a very, very slow ship. Uh, let's get the... Uh, yeah, let's set the torpedo bombers into their alternative firing path. So what that would be is if I was to hold down Alt, they would both fire in a straight line as opposed to spread. And of course, if you lead this perfectly onto a Fuso or Battleship or whatever, the enemy then you're the uh, more and more likely to deal mass damage. So if I can get the within sort of firing range, we're getting closer and closer. I probably should do it around here. And I'll do the... The, the die bomber to fire in two. He's not turning especially. I, the fighter's coming in. I will we'll engage with my fighter. Torpedoes are down. Okay, they're getting back to base. Everyone's going back to base. Is he going to be set on fire? Is he going to avoid the, the torpedoes? This is what the torpedo spread looks like when you, uh, when you have them in a straight line. It seems he might probably get hit by a couple. He's turning very sharply. Yep, yeah, he's going to hit by at least a few. One, two, three, four. Okay, damage wasn't quite substantial there. I, I was expecting more with the mass, uh, with the increased damage on the torpedo bombers to a maximum of 8,500. That was actually quite crappy. But he is now flooding. I don't know if he's topped the repair for the fire. I assume he did. Yep. Okay, he is taking gradual damage, which is very good for us. Okay, the fighter is now being engaged by two fighters, which I need to get the hell out of there. He probably will um, not survive the journey. But I do have one more fighter squadron to use afterwards. So I have up to two of these uh, fight squadrons, two torpedo bombers, uh, sorry, no, four torpedo bomber squadrons, and one dive bomber squadron. And that's probably, uh, that's for the whole, um, the whole match. So my, uh, the hangar capacity is, is quite high, but when you have four plane squadrons going around, then it's, yeah, they, they get depleted quite quickly. I'll try and probably move the aircraft carrier somewhere safer. There is a destroyer sort of lurking around B, along with the enemy uh, torpedo bombers. Our team has taken the lead. So we've done four torpedo hits, three floodings. So the battleship is still flooding, and of course when a ship floods, uh, it decreases in speed. It takes more and more gradual damage over and over until you have repair up again, the repairability, the function, um, which only replaces every two minutes. With battleships, however, you do have the increased health buff. The uh, repair, they have two repairs. One which repairs uh, modules and one which actually repairs the health of the ship. So either of them can be used to help. But you only, you only last so long. So I'm just waiting for them all to get back. Um, of course, a problem with every aircraft carrier is the wait time in between planes. When they get a bit faster, they're a bit better, yeah. But the gap between deploying planes and sending them back and, and oh, it's, it's quite long. It's quite a long wait time. So the fighter is now loose. And I will send um, the torpedo bomber this way also. How is the... How is he doing? Okay, the Fuso, we have done quite a substantial amount of damage to, but it seems he has repaired. Uh, we've done an upwards of around 30,000 damage. From only four torpedo hits, which is great. So, torpedo bomber is loose. Fighter bomber is also loose. Um, see if I can actually help the fleet by engaging their bombers. Probably be quite good here. We are losing, I guess. Yeah, we are just about losing. Be careful where I've actually put my planes. Uh, idly, just because planes they're so weak around sort of the new cruisers with the buff of the recent patch, they're just they have at least like an extra 10 or 15 um, power and it makes a huge difference so send the, the torpedo bombers over to the battleships again, send the uh, torpedo bombers to do their thing uh, over there and the uh, double bombers on the uh, hopefully the Ober and the fighter to hopefully engage the their dive bomber and take them down as quickly as possible. 
He's struggling, however. Wow, okay, wow. Um, seems not, they're not as good as I thought they were. Which is a bit of a shame. Okay, I'm going to try and attack the Fuso first with the uh, the typical tactics of the Die Bomber first. Set him on fire. He then uses repair ability. And then he doesn't have it for next time. Then I do the Torpedo Bombers and cause flooding, which does us substantially more damage over time. So he's nearing closer. He has lost one plane out of the squadron because the uh, Ober is firing on him. It should do around a thousand damage. Hopefully, fire as well. 900 damage, no fire. Could be better. Torpedo Bomber is coming within range now. We have taken down another ship. So now it's getting closer and closer to what we want. Um, Schools are about even, but we do have two cap points, which gives us a slight advantage over the enemy. Got to, uh, sort of analyze the speed of the Fuso. That's about right, I guess. As long as he doesn't turn sharply, then I'll be able to get some good hits with the torpedoes. Oh, he isn't turning very sharply. Fuso does decelerate very slowly, though, so he will take at least a couple. Oh, no, he's even. Oh, that's fantastic. He's going to take four, three. One, two, three. Great. Only 5,000 damage below average. But he should be flooding. He is flooding. Wow. We are under attack. Ah, but their fighter is now engaging my torpedo bomber. That's the problem, really, with torpedo bombers, is they're so susceptible to enemy fighters. They do get blown, uh, shot down very quickly. So I could just leave the Fuso to sink. I don't know when his repair's back up. I assume it's within sort of a minute time. He also might have the typical battleship repair. But he is sinking sort of 500 health every second. Wow, so he is going to die very quickly, hopefully. As long as the enemy doesn't snap, uh, my, sorry, my allies snap up the kill with a couple of fire uh, shots. But yeah, he's, he's, he's sinking very quickly now. Yeah. Good kill, good kill. We have, uh, we have however, lost a torpedo bomber. Uh, we are running out of planes, actually. We only have eight torpedo bombers left, one fighter squadron, which I don't think is full. Um, oh, we actually got another torpedo hit. Very nice. And the uh, the squadron for the dive bombers. We're sort of running low now. But we are winning. Our is in sight. We're winning on, in both terms of, of score and uh, more people. So it's misleading, actually. When you have less people on a team and the higher tiers, you can, in fact, win. The tier difference isn't substantial. Okay, he's trying to engage my aircraft carrier. Come back here. The DPS should really show now with both the aircraft carrier uh, capability and the um, the fighter capability. He should really take him down quickly. Um, he misses. I shot down one, shot down two, and three. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm going to get him back to repair the torpedo. Oh dear, that's not good for us. There is in fact a destroyer, a Mizuki tier six Japanese destroyer, which is sort of near and closer. Mizuki has just got recently got a buff with its turn time of its guns. They have changed quite a lot since the, the recent patch. I have to try and engage him somehow. But they're kind of hard to determine or to figure out which way they're going to go. Oh, if I turn sideways on him, he's going to just blow me away with his torpedoes. I have to turn towards him and hope for the best. If I only... Oh, break, break, break. Oh, uh, go forward, go forward. Oh, I'm going to take some hits here. Ah! We hit him, we hit him. With a torpedo. Uh, to be induced flooding? I don't think so. Nah, either way. Uh, we hit him once, we got... Uh, we did alright, actually, in this, ma uh, in this match. Um... Seems we're still going to win, so him killing me doesn't really change the, the outcome of the battle. We killed one, we got nine uh, shots. Uh, we shot down nine planes, nine torpedo hits, eight floodings, uh, two uh, dive bomb attacks. One kill. So pretty good game overall. So this has been the um, the tier six American aircraft carrier, the Saipan. It's actually a pretty good ship overall. It's a it's a big upgrade, uh, a big increase 
on the tier below, the independence. The independence is uh, sort of a, a, a bridging area, really, between the Saipan and the uh, the tier 4 Langley. It's a very gradual increase. Uh, this is a very, very nice increase, however, on the tier 5. Uh, the extra squadron does help the active of four groups of planes instead of three. It means you can then have the extra bomber to then attack a different ship. And when you're, you don't have to go in groups, because when you go in groups, uh, in planes, you send them all together and then they all come back. Um, the downtime is a, is a very long time. It's better, in my opinion, just to do um, one torpedo bomber going for one, um, and then you send another torpedo bomber to go somewhere else, and they will come back uh, one at a time, because if you send all the planes to land at the same time, they then line up, and so it, it, the time stacks, they take, I don't know, 10 seconds to land. So four planes, that's 40 seconds for all the planes to land, and then the la they need to take off as well. So you can't have one group taking off while one group's landing. So it's kind of pointless. So it's just to do, it's best in my opinion, just to go one torpedo bomber going for one direction, one dive bomber, one fighter engaging another fighter, then the next torpedo bomber, fighter comes back, uses his ammo, then the torpedo bomber replenishes his, and then the other torpedo bomber, and then the dive bomber, etc., etc. And then you always have a couple of planes out at one time. Yes, it, it does mean your torpedo bombers are um, easier targets for the enemy fighters. But it is probably the best tactic, in my opinion, just to go one at a time. Um, probably for the best damage output. But yeah, this has been the Saipan at Tier 6. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, next time I'll definitely be playing the Nagato. The Nagato I have fully upgraded now. And it is it's one hell of a ship. The new caliber guns. The survivability of nearly 80. Uh, it's just a fantastic ship. I've also unlocked the Oba, which is the Tier 6 Japanese cruiser, torpedoes, uh, 2x4 on each side, great guns, 203mm, very similar to the Cleveland, uh, with the exception of less guns and torpedoes. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.